Welcome to Type Seed Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be unboxing the Enosin 40 inch ultra wide monitor. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same huge monitor through Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada and international links, but let's get this thing unboxed. I am excited. I don't know which way to unbox this, but we're gonna try this way. There's kind of a tab right here. First thing to do is we'll cut these. Now, I have two big concerns with this monitor as we unbox it. This is a brand that no one really knows, which may not be a bad thing. I highly doubt that this panel is actually made by them. Let's open this little thing up here. I'm not sure what this is. So it looks like you open it this way. I'm not sure why. There's a little opening compartment there, but there is. Now, the thing with this monitor is it is actually a budget gaming productivity, not super, but ultra wide, massive monitor, but it's also on a budget and it's calibrated. I don't know. It's a lot of weird stuff going on that we've really never seen before. So it's exciting. Okay, but the unboxing experience for being not a super name brand brand, it's actually pretty good. We've got a USB-C cable, which means it has a USB-C port, a display port cable, some standoffs for maybe a vase amount, and then a user manual. Very cool. We also then have the power cable, and this is the first good thing, internal power supply. So this means this power cable, if you want a longer one, you can just buy them. They're super cheap to replace. Internal power supply is awesome, especially for cable management as well. So these are all really good things. Now here is the calibration. Now they use Delta E for calibrating this thing. So this is the calibration sheet that is something that you typically only see on non-budget monitors. This is budget, like really budget for what this is. However, the PPI and not having a curve are really big concerns of mine. So we'll see if this is worth it because it's a really good price. Now here looks like the bottom of the stand. Nice and heavy, actually. Wow. Okay, so this is a solid piece of metal. On top, it's metal as well. That's actually very premium. Uh, we saw a similar style design on the EVE display, the 4K EVE display. This looks very good. Surprising. And then opening this up, we've got the rest of the stand over here, nicely packaged. Here is the rest of the stand. Now this is all plastic, but it looks very nicely designed. It's clean. We've got their logo on the top. That looks actually, yeah, there's plastic on it. Yeah, this is a very clean style, everything. I'm very impressed so far. So right here, you can see we have swivel on the stand built into the top. That doesn't feel like the highest quality swivel right there, but that's fine. Cable management right there. It's a nice design. It's got height adjustability, which is, very hard, which means this thing's probably very heavy. But let's put the stand together. To do this, just like every other, you just line it up, put it in there. This is a high quality thumb screw. We can actually just screw this in by hand. Although I will say this little tab moves around quite a bit. This is actually the first monitor that I've ever seen that does that. So there's little small things that this one, because it's on a name brand, doesn't do quite as right. However, the stand looks really good. Okay, with that all put together, nice strong stand. All right, let's get this out. This is obviously a clip-in one. So get the top in and then press it down and it's all clipped in now. Okay. Ooh, this thing is, this thing is heavy, man. This thing is really freaking heavy. Ooh. Okay, now we have this massive ultra wide on the desk. Let's get this off. This is very exciting. And there we go. This thing is absolutely humongous. I wanna say right off the bat, I am impressed with a few things. Number one, the design elements and the quality here. I hated the Eve design. I think it was terrible. This one is much better. I don't like that this, is, this cable management hole is so close to the bottom, but that's fine. This is really nice here. Coming around to the back, the back of the monitor matches the stand perfectly flat designs, angular designs here. We can see airflow on the top right here. All these lines for a lot of airflow, which is very cool. Now let's come down. More nice angular designs. Looks like it has internal speakers on that side. Also some speaker vents on this side. You have your cable management right here in the middle, which is where you want the cables to go to hide them. The ports are over all the way on this side. And then on the other side is where the power goes in. So that is kind of not the best planning there. However, this thing is super budget. We're gonna give it a pass with that. So looking under here, we've got one HDMI, another HDMI, a display port, a USB type C, and then a three and a half millimeter audio out and that's it. Now we also get down here and we see we've got the controls which don't look very good. However, again, if this monitor turns out to be good, this price point is insane. I think it's $600. That's freaking insane. And it's an IPS panel. All right, but now let's test the stand. Then we're gonna get it hooked up, do a gaming impressions, initial impressions of everything. Cause this monitor is totally new. We've never seen it on the channel before. So for the stand, fairly difficult compared to name brands to do the height adjustability, but it's still easy enough. You're gonna set it where you wanna set it and it works. Tilt is very easy. Doesn't tilt a ton uh, and it doesn't feel super high quality. The swiveling, it also doesn't feel the highest of quality. Uh, definitely not like name brands, but it works. So. 
Uh, I don't think there's any issues there. Let's get this thing hooked up and then give impressions, ghosting test, and initial impressions of the monitor overall. Let's do it. All right, guys, now that it's on the desk, this thing is massive. Now, if you come down, you can see the cables like I was talking about. Now, these could probably be cable managed, pull them up like that. However, still not the best placement. Let's let it go. Okay, so now we have home, up and down, power. So these are the controls that we're gonna use. I don't like this at all. However, it's a new company, so I'm gonna give them a break. But let's turn this thing on. There we go, it's booting up and we definitely want English. Okay, so right away it is up and it looks okay. It doesn't look great. However, we haven't gone into any of the settings, so let's do that right now. First, before we do that, let's go into display settings. It's at 3440 by 1440p, so just 1440p ultra wide, which is, like I said, not the greatest PPI in the world. You can definitely see some pixelization or some pixels, pixelation? Pixelation. However, let's go into advanced and let's set it to its full 144 hertz. That's the amazing thing. Guys, it's this big and it's still a gaming monitor, which is insane. So obviously really smooth 144 hertz. Let's then go into NVIDIA control panel and let's see if this thing can output 10 bits of color. I'm assuming it can and it can at full 144 hertz. That's awesome. Okay, but let's go into that menu system, which is gonna be interesting. I've never used this menu system before. I'm assuming it's this button. Yeah, so there, and that's kind of the menu system. Okay, not, not as bad as I was expecting. Okay, so not really sure how I how I go over. Not an intuitive menu system at all. Yeah, very not intuitive. But the brightness did increase there, I think. It's interesting how they have like the RTS RPG mode. This is very confusing. Refresh rate is in the off position. So we have, these are the different response times right here. We're gonna go through that uh, when we go over the ghosting. Adaptive sync is off, so let's turn that. Oh, just did the wrong one. Let's turn that one, let's turn that on. This is a really bad menu system. It's probably the worst. Acer had a pretty bad one, but this one, this one takes the cake. It's pretty bad. What is FPS arena mode? What is that? Uh, whatever, let's keep going through it. So we got that on. We're gonna go back down here to professional. Okay, so here we have the actual uh, standard mode, sRGB mode, um, so that definitely dimmed the brightness as it should. Um, Adobe mode, which is very cool. Uniform mode, then we have the sharpness, shadow balance, hue, saturation, dynamic brightness, we don't want that. Let's go up and put it in the standard mode again, and let's go down to picture settings, that's what we really want now. And the brightness is at 50 or 60%, let's turn this all the way up to 100% brightness. And okay, it gets reasonably bright. It's always hard to tell in these bright rooms, guys. I get it wrong every single time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it looks good. I would say around 400 nits, but I'm probably gonna be wrong. So we're gonna test it. Uh, so then we have HDR. So this has HDR support, which is cool. Then let's go back. It has picture in picture, picture by picture. That is very cool. And then some other settings here. We have volume, which I think that we do. I'm gonna just set that to 100% because I think we do have those internal speakers. Absolutely horrendous menu system not at all intuitive, it's not good. However, it's fine, okay? If this panel turns out to be really good, I don't care. Let's go right in and we're gonna test the brightness. This hasn't warmed up or anything, but we're gonna test the brightness right away. Okay, so testing the brightness, about 300 nits. I literally said 400 and it goes, and it goes to 300. It's always hard, the screen size is big. So yeah, we're getting around 300 nits. Um, which is not terrible. Um, and for doing color accurate work, that's fine, but this is kind of a color accurate, but also gaming because it doesn't have high enough resolution to be like a creative panel, but you could do it on it. It's a weird mix of things. However, the biggest thing that it has going for it is that it's huge, let's game on it, okay? I wish this was curved, but let's game on it anyway. Okay, so these are the speakers right now. Not bad, actually. Definitely muffled, but um, not bad for coming with the monitor. Now I'm gonna tell you right away, as we can see, come up here a little bit, you can see with the players online, you can see with the seven, you can definitely see the pixelation here. So that's obviously pretty zoomed in. However, this is about, at my distance, this is about what I see, and you can still see the pixelation there. So the PPI is fairly low. However, it's really budget, and guys, I have no idea with this unboxing. I am going to completely have to recommend this during the review. This is gonna be an interesting one. Yeah, so guys, right now this is $600, and that is a pretty dang good price for what this is. I don't know if it's gonna be worth it, that's gonna be in the full review, but the fact that you can get a 40 inch ultra wide that's IPS and calibrated from the factory well, that's pretty amazing on its own. However, we have not seen the ghosting yet, which I'm not sure about yet. However, the input lag feels 
pretty dang good. Better, honestly, than I was expecting. The PPI is definitely lower and you notice it. Uh, however, I just actually came from a 4K monitor. So, you know, do take that into account, a 4K 32 inch monitor. So that PPI was pretty dang high. However, the gaming experience is super immersive and more immersive than I thought it was going to be considering that there's no curve. That's actually pretty big. I'm actually like, I'm very immersed while playing the game because it's so freaking huge and there was no curve, which I actually, I was thinking I wasn't going to enjoy the gaming experience, but just because it's so big, it like feels like it wraps around you. So that's a pleasant surprise. Now I can say right away, the brightness is nothing special, but the panel is still vibrant, even at 300 nits. The panel is still vibrant, especially if you had uh, more lights off. But the matte finish here isn't too intense, but it is enough to keep most reflections away. They did a good job with the matte finish. It's not overly intense like I've seen some uh, gigabyte monitors be. So this one's pretty good. Yeah, guys, honestly, I am really enjoying gaming on this way more than I thought I was going to. I wasn't sure about it uh, during the unboxing, but now I'm, I'm warming up to this thing quite a bit. Yeah, this thing is, it's actually quite fast. Uh, as far as as far as input lag that I'm feeling, uh, it seems pretty dang quick, uh, which is not what I was expecting. I was expecting this to be kind of okay at everything, but it seems like it's quite good at gaming. You should be able to push higher frames like I am now because of that only 1440p resolution. I know that we should move on, but I'm having too much fun doing this. But yeah, let's move on to the ghosting because that's going to be an interesting section. Very impressed so far. That was That was cool. Now, I will say this because there is calibration and stuff like that. When you're on like the desktop going around stuff like this, the PPI gets a lot more noticeable. This is kind of like using a 1080p 24 inch monitor. So you still, you do get some pixelation there. Um, is it enough where it couldn't be a daily driver? For me, I could, I could definitely live with this, especially because that gaming performance, that's sticking with me. It was good. Okay, but let's go into ghosting. Okay, so right away, there is quite a bit of ghosting for an IPS panel, but overall, not that much ghosting. So let's go on full screen here, and we're gonna go into the settings and go down to those response time settings. Might take me a second. Go down to the response time settings. Let's set it into fast. Hopefully it doesn't cause too much pixel overshooting. Basically no difference there. Let's go into off, see if it changes at all. It changes very, very slightly. Okay, so there is ghosting. I kind of saw that uh, right in the beginning when I started gaming. However, I just came from a crystal clear gigabyte 4K monitor, but it was expensive. This thing has ghosting. Is it something where you can't live with it? If you're a competitive gamer, maybe you can't. If I was using this thing for gaming, I'm probably gonna be fine with this. Uh, it's a little amount of ghosting where if you're comparing it to a VA panel, like if you have a VA panel, this is not gonna be much ghosting at all. It's gonna be less than you already have. However, if you're using fast, very fast IPS panels, this will have considerably more ghosting. But overall, what do I think of this? I have no idea yet. I really enjoyed the gaming performance, but overall what this monitor is, I am not sure. But again, if you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I don't know if it's in the US, UK, or I know if it's in the US, but I don't know if it's in Canada or the UK. So you'll have to see, click on the links below. But my full review of this will be coming out very, very, very soon. But I'm gonna take my time with this monitor and really give you a really good opinion because this thing is like, bringing my mind back and forth on what's good and what's bad. But this was Type C Tech Reviews. I'll see you guys in the review. Type C Tech Reviews out? Yeah.